Hi everybody. Oh, I'm finally getting to another vlog. I know I need to be more consistent with it. I'm going to be. I'm going to be. This is my my goal. It's my goal to do it every Friday. I'm going to do it. Every Monday I'm going to do it. Something. I need to figure out a day. Um, today's vlog is about food addiction, and for the first time ever, I'm going to kind of walk you through my addiction with food and the experiences that I've had, and hopefully my story can help some of you. And if you feel called after listening to my vlog today, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up for my class at the Harvard Community College. I'm so excited about it. I've designed this workbook for it. It's just going to be amazing. And it's not another, it's not, 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 not another diet. It's not another exercise program. If you really struggle in that relationship with food, really with your relationship to yourself, and I beg you, I beg you, if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this and you feel called, sign up for that class. Because um, I think it's just going to be, um, I think it's going to be life transforming. And I'm just very excited about it. I feel very guided to teach it. And I'm very excited. Um, so when I was 19 years old, um, the dean of students at my college called my parents and said, you need to come get her. She um, has some problems with alcohol. And of course at the time, I was kind of like, well, you know, everyone's drinking. Everyone's binge drinking. Everybody's um, doing this. And I went fighting and screaming and my parents are just like completely embarrassed and dumbfounded. So they're dragging me home. And that's when the process started of for four months, um, three nights a week, I was in an outpatient treatment center for alcoholism course the youngest one here I am in 19 I mean most of these people were 30 and above if not late 50s and 60s and here I said um, the reason I'm telling you that story is because once that addiction ended or that obsession ended because it was I mean most kids probably were binge drinking most kids were probably drinking at that age but I don't know how many were doing shots of vodka before class at 9 a.m. <laughs> which I was, anything to numb, anything to, to numb what I was feeling. So as this four month process went on, I was feeling pretty good, right? Embarrassed, had to come home. Here I am doing this alcoholism treatment, but I was feeling pretty good. What everyone didn't notice, but I knew what was going on is how emaciated I was getting. Going from probably about 136 pounds to at the end of the four months, probably anywhere between 113, 114 pounds. I'm five foot eight. So crazy gross skinny. Um, I just had switched addictions. I had, instead of having alcohol numb my pain, I decided to turn to diet pills, binge eating, over exercising, under eating, you name it overly obsessing with the scale, overly obsessing with the calories, and this is where that journey began. Oh, it's very difficult. Sometimes it's difficult to talk about it. Um, yeah, so that's where it became. Um, food prison, food prison, years, years, and years. Fast forward to being married and my Ex -hus now ex-husband Tom would say, well, let's go out to dinner, you know, let's go do something. Mm -mm. I only have 100 more calories for the day. I need to get on the scale four more times today. Don't you see? Don't you see how heavy I am? As I sit there at whatever I was, 125, 130 pounds, like a very healthy weight, overly concerned with the scale, overly concerned with anything related to food obsessively counting with the cows. It was a prison. It was a living hell. Everything was wrapped around it. My job was wrapped around it. My relationships were wrapped around it. It was all consuming. It was a battle every single day. And then came the day, 9-11 um, happened. Tom and I moved to Germany and six months later he was deployed to Iraq. It was within that six months that I just fell to my knees. I literally just fell and said, I can't fucking do this anymore. This is a prison. 
I hate this. I hate myself. I don't know how I'm going to have a family with this. I don't even know how I'm going to, I can't function. I'm getting on the scale eight times a day. I'm running to the mirror every 10 seconds to see if I'm overweight. I'm obsessive about my calories. I have a calendar going at this time. I put X's on the calendar the days that I do well, which doing well meant starving myself. And O's or like circles on the days that I do bad. And then I add them up at the end of the month. I mean, this was a full-time gig. Okay, full-time gig, full-time food prison. And when I fell to my knees, just sobbing compulsively, just, just, in, just in so much pain, I heard a voice say, throw away the scale. You crazy? I'm not throwing away that scale. Throw away the scale. Throw away the scale. That no. You don't understand. Like I get on this thing ten times a day. I'm not throwing away the scale. But at that point, my relationship with Tom was I mean, it was it was becoming so horrific. It was becoming such a huge, you know, issue for us. My relationships with my friends, I wasn't going out to dinner. How could I go out to dinner? I needed to, I could only stay in this many calories. I didn't know what your food contained, how many calories it contained. Spending hours at the gym when it could be spent, you know, home resting and being with, being in these relationships. So I threw away my scale. I think about a month later, I ended up buying another one for a very short period of time and then throwing that one away. But that was the beginning. With that willingness, all of a sudden, Books started to fall off the shelf. People started to come into my life that were going to teach me great lessons. They were my greatest assignments. Things started to happening that were all lessons. Lessons for me to learn so that I could get out of this. And I fought it. Don't get me wrong. But I knew I needed to get out of this. I knew that if I was going to die like this, this was going to kill me. And even if it didn't kill me on a physical level, there was no Kelly. There was no existence. It was consumed by this. So, like I said, people started coming into my life. Relationships started to happen. I remember when Tom left for Iraq for 15 months. Um, lots of different women whose husbands were also deployed came into my life and they were like, do you want to come out for dinner? Do you want to go out to lunch? Things like this. And of course, I'm petrified, right? I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be isolated. But then again, I don't know what they're cooking. I don't know how many calories are in it. These are really nice looking women. I'm like, if they can do this, you know, they're, they look nice. They're normal looking girls. I can do this too. So slowly I started to go to dinner with them. And I thought, oh wow, I can eat dinner. I don't have to count my calories. I think I'm doing okay. My, my clothes still fit. I think I'm doing okay. First assignment. Second assignment. I remember one of my good friends at the time said to me, I, need to, I want you to meet somebody. There I was introduced to Barb. Barb was um, a psychologist. She was an expert in eating disorders. And there began my relationship in therapy with her which was which was great because that's right where I needed to be and that went on for a long time and it was a good thing too because then I be right when Tom came home I became pregnant so then you're dealing with that weight gain right and the struggles that come along with that and so my journey just continued and continued fast forward to today all of the things that I went through, and there were many, and there were many more in between those two, and there were many ups and downs. T today, I no longer live in that food prison. Today, I live by honoring my body, respecting my body, and I exercise, and yes, I watch what I eat, but I don't, I don't weigh myself. I don't obsess about it. Um, Yes, I plan and I do the things that I need to do to take care of me, to have a very, very strong body, but I see myself differently. 
it's gone. Um, I can't believe it. <laughs> um, if you would have told me, I guess that was back in like what, so many years ago. If you would even have told me eight years ago, seven years ago, Kelly, you're going to live without this obsession. Your food issues and your food addictions are going to be basically gone. I would have told you you were crazy. I would have said you're absolutely crazy. You're absolutely crazy. Um, so it can be done. There is hope. Whatever your relationship is with food. Maybe it's nothing like mine. But maybe it's a little like mine. Maybe you're someone who overeats or overdrinks, or or um, maybe you're someone who doesn't binge eat, but then just eats a lot more on the weekends and then tries to starve themselves throughout the week. Whatever that relationship is, if you feel called to heal that relationship, if you want free, if you want to be free, that opportunity is here for you. We're all given the opportunity. It's not always easy. And it comes with work. But let me tell you something. It feels so good on the other side. It feels so good. I no longer live in that food prison. I have moments. I remember just about a couple weeks ago, um, I found out that um, you know my ex-husband is getting remarried. And they set the date. And there was a feeling that came over me. Like, oh, I would really like to go binge eat. I would really like to kind of go over exercise or starve myself. The thoughts come. The only difference is I don't react to those thoughts now. I choose not to react to those thoughts now. I choose to live a healthy life. I listen to that voice and now I can laugh at that voice. Like, no, that's nonsense. I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to feel what I need to feel, which is hurt, which is frustration, which is sadness. And then I'm going to go past it. And I'm going to take care of myself. That, that wouldn't even have been a thought years ago. It would have been, let, let me see how many blizzards I can stuff down my throat. Honestly. Or let's see how, if I can eat that whole bag box of cookies. Because that will numb me out for about 30 seconds until I feel completely horrible about myself. It's a cycle we get ourselves into. It's habits. It's a cycle. It's a cycle of eating poorly, not exercising, not taking care of ourselves. Whatever that is for you. Feeling guilty about it and getting right back into the cycle again. It's very difficult, you know, to be in that cycle. To live in that. So I have lots of tools that I use today and I feel very guided to share those tools with all of you. And so I hope that some of you will make your way into that class at Harvard Community College. You'll find your way there. It's going to be three Thursdays in October. You make that commitment to yourself. Um, it's an opportunity. And um, yeah, so that's my story. There's probably a lot more to it. And that will all come out during the class. And I hope that by me sharing my story for, with you today, somehow maybe it's, it's helped you. Um, but yeah, so that's it. We all have our own stories. They're very unique to us. I understand that completely. And our relationships to food are all extremely unique. That's why I don't buy into the diet plans and the exercise plans that are specifically designed. Because we're not... I'm not like you, you're not like me, you're not like your best friend, you're not like your husband, and we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to those people as well. This is a journey, it's our own journey, this life, right? So I hope that, yeah, I hope you'll sign up for the class, um, and, you'll, um, and you'll continue to take care of yourself, and I'm going to try to make a commitment to keep doing these vlogs. <laughs> so anyway, have a great day. Um, and, um, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.